morning, everybody. It's Monday. I did the unspeakable this weekend. And I'm gonna share it with you. Because I trust you to keep my secret. This weekend, I had Starbucks. A cup of coffee from Starbucks. And I liked it. It actually tasted like coffee. Just pulling in Tim's here now. I am seriously considering in the future, possibly, I don't know. I don't know. Trying it again. It was kind of nice having coffee that tasted like coffee. Whereas at Tim's here, I always have to add an espresso shot into it just to make it taste a little bit like coffee. Because since Burger King bought it out, like on a corporate level, the coffee's been terrible. But we still keep coming because we love it. Right? I don't know. Habit? I don't know. Maybe we're crazy? Can I get a large coffee with two cream and a shot of espresso, please? Sure, it's like a I'll put it in. That's it. Alrighty, we'll have over to the window. Thank you. The only problem is that Starbucks, the same coffee without the espresso shot, is 50 cents more. It's not too bad, right? But I'm in such a dilemma. I'm a loyal Tim Hortons man. Tim Carter. Thank you. You too. I am a loyal Tim Hortons goer and a Canadian patriot, which means I have to drink Tim Hortons, right? <laughs> I know I'm being over dramatic with this. It's, uh, trying to be funny but uh yeah starbucks okay i'm taking you off the blacklist all right your coffee's actually pretty good your coffee's actually pretty good i can't believe i just said that out loud to all the people on the internet but not bad not bad we'll see where the future takes us for now the future is taking us to our big truck we got some trucking to do today you guys excited i'm excited no idea what's on the agenda yet. We're gonna go over there, get the truck warmed up. Let's see what they got for us. Here we are. Time to get trucking. Egg dirty. Okay. Here is our first week's assignment. Bring this old Massey Ferguson somewhere. Got to tie her down first. Got that. You got an old mower attached to that. Little bobcat back here. And a little excavator. I could use this load. I could use this at my property. Man, I'd love to have that for a weekend. And then that for another weekend. We've been having fun. Got everything chained down. I just pulled it out of its spot to, uh, stay close. Pulled it out of its spot here to do the straps over the tires and whatnot. But there she is. I could really use those two, especially that one on the end. I don't know where they're going yet. They just told me to tie it down and then come get the paperwork. So it's all tied down. I'm gonna put four straps, two over each tire there, and one strap over the mower here to keep that on the ground. And probably a strap over that uh, excavator bucket just to keep that from bouncing. warmed up now I'll let it rest for a bit get some peace and quiet so you'll notice what I do is I, uh, I make an X pattern from the front to the back from the 
the back to the front x pattern with two straps i don't know how far this load's gonna go we might be taking this thing just around the corner i might be taking it a few hours down the road find out once i get to the office and get the paperwork but for now i'm tying it down as if this thing's going across the continent there's no such thing as too much load securement too many straps there is such a thing as not enough everybody's sort of got their own way of doing things around the general uh securement tactics i don't know what i'm trying to say here there are certain regulations that we have to follow but within those regulations everyone sort of has their own uh their own little style of doing it that's what i was trying to say there are rules to follow but there are more than one way there is more than one way to uh tie down your freight a lot of the time sometimes it's just straightforward one way to do it like when you're hauling lumber, you just put a strap over it and tie it down. That's pretty much the only way you can do it. Unless you want to be crazy and uh, throw chains over there. That's probably going to dig into the lumber, though. People might not be happy with that one. You don't want to damage the freight. It's kind of tricky sometimes, tying down freight without damaging it. That is part of the job. You can't just tie it down and say you're done, you did a good job. No. In order to say you did your job, you have to tie it down according to regulation safely so that it's not going to fall off with also not damaging the freight itself. I think that's the hardest part sometimes. Turns out they're not going very far. Just around to the other side of the city, about a half hour drive. And then I've got to rush back. I've got two, two drops out there. The Bobcat and the Excavator are going to one place. And the big tractor and the tires are going to the next. And i got to rush back, grab a trailer, and head up to Harbor. Looks like it's going to be a busy day. We are rushing today. Rushing along, we got the two back ones off. We got the mini excavator and the mini bobcat off. These two are going to a separate place on the west side of the city. That's not the one we had, but they take these in, they, they fix them up, and they sell them. So I think those two came from Ontario. I'm pretty sure this Massey Ferguson came from Ontario as well. I'll have to double check the paperwork, but 
yeah, it's quick. I gotta go all the way up to Arburg today yet, so rush, rush today. No wasting time. I got them untied or unsecured, unloaded, and had all my loads come right, my chains, my straps put away nicely in 15 minutes. Now it's time to go. <sighs> this way. Gotta get back to the west perimeter. Uh, gonna be a little bit of curb action. Uh, they make these uh, Entrances and exits just a little bit too small for the trucks that need to deliver there. Well, here we go, we got it. Well, this vehicle's coming past on my right. I'm gonna go around here. This is Murray Park Road. I'm gonna go across uh, or around here on Creek Crescent. So I can do a U-turn and go back towards uh, uh, what is it called? Center Centerport Way or whatever? Canada Way. Takes me back to the perimeter anyway. Gotta go around here. Oh, 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 buddy, 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 buddy. Thank you. Not his fault. No one's fault, just an unlucky circumstance. <laughs> sure is a nice day out. It's a little bit cool for my liking, but uh, better than snow. And look at this, we still have some snow on the ground. It snowed yesterday on Sunday. I didn't make a video on Sunday. I don't make videos uh, often on Sunday. Sometimes I do but not every Sunday. It's usually the day that I just uh, rest and relax. But we sure did get some snow again. It just won't leave us alone. But it is supposed to get pretty warm this week, so this will all be gone in a couple of days. It is what it is, we live in Manitoba. The weather here is unpredictable. We get extremes in all directions, except we get no hurricanes and no earthquakes. So there's that. At least we don't get those. <coughs> Why do I feel like that guy blocked the whole road? That guy literally blocked the entire road. He parked right there on the road in the middle of the lane. Why? And he ran in, which means he just left it there for a while while he ran inside there. Why wouldn't you park like over here where you could at least get out of the traffic? You got to release the brakes first, my friend. There you go. You figured it out. I'm trying to pull his trailer without releasing the brakes. Okay, bud, what are you doing? You have lots of room. What are you doing? Why did you make it so awkward? Now he's gonna block the road there. Like, who does that? They come onto a corner here and block the whole road and run inside. He's still parked over there blocking the road. 
Oh boy, some people, some people tell you what. Could have gone, could have probably done with a couple more days of training maybe, I don't know. That's sort of just common sense in my opinion though. Don't park your rig in the middle of the road and run inside somewhere. It's just not, not a very nice thing to do. wonderful European roundabouts you know everyone hates them but now we're just sort of uh, <laughs> just sort of going with it whatever see I'm going here he's coming here too but I'm going here but he's going there okay see I had no idea is there another car coming every day something different every day that's what I like about the job it's never the same thing Oh, thank you. Look as he bows to me as I come in. Yes, kiss the hand of your king. Yes, yes. You too? You too? You want some? Of yes, yes. And can you sit? No? Can you sit? Oh, the weasel. He's so good. Such a good boy. Good boy. Hey, Wiener. Frank, you want to go outside? The little guys. Where's the little guy, Chevy? Wiener. Frank. Come. Let's go outside. Come on. They were just here. He's ready. He's ready. Come on. Wiener, come on. Come on. Come on. In the yard. Get him. Get him. Get him. I'll just get my own stick. I don't like confrontation. Almost got rid of all the snow here already. You have a good day? Productive. What did y'all do today? Lots of laundry and vacuuming and a bathed wiener because he stunk like well, an old man. Wiener had a bath? And then I had to bleach out the tub after. It was that bad? <laughs> well, when you bathe the dog, you should wash out the tub afterward. Wiener, you're dirty. It's the same one you use for humans. There he is. 
That's why he didn't want to come out. He's embarrassed. Yep. I'm he's, a filthy Vina. He's pretty angry at me and he just slept all day. He's exhausted. <laughs> It had been a long time since he'd had a bath though. I think it had been like over a year. I can't even remember the last time I gave him a bath, so it was time.